FM dial to 90.1, and uh, you'd be able to hear through the speakers if you prefer to do that, 90.1. You may be wondering, some of you may be wondering why we're meeting outside. Well, we found out that someone tested positive in our church for COVID, so we're going to give it that two-week period. And uh, next Sunday, we will be back in church, and uh, we're looking forward to that. And uh, so let's go ahead, we'll pray, and uh, we'll look to the Lord in prayer and thank Him for this good day that He's given us to worship Him together. Let's pray together. Lord, we are grateful this morning, and Lord, we just pray that You would help us and bless us as we're gathered in this place. Lord, thank You for every person that's made their way out to hear the Word of God and to sing. And Lord, I just pray You'd be with us and bless us now. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, if you look at that packet there, you will find the songs uh, that we will be singing. And uh, the first song we're going to sing is, Take the Name of Jesus with you. You should find it there in that packet. And uh, brother's going to come and he's going to lead us in this song. Take the Name of Jesus with you. Sister Church of the Week, and we have our Missionary of the Week, and I hope you'll remember to pray for these this week. Our Sheep of the Week is Miss Kay Brown, and I'd ask you to remember to pray for her every day this week, and then our Sister Church of the Week is the Faith Bible Baptist Church in Century, Florida, Pastor Robert Barrow, and our uh, Missionary of the Week is a missionary to West Africa. His name is Yaovi Pogno, so remember to pray uh, for him, if you will, that God would bless and help them in that ministry. Uh, we have several new things going on uh, inside uh, that you need to be aware of. We've got all of our uh, updated sheets. If you work in the nursery, all those sheets in there have been updated. Our singing list, all those things. And if you're taking part in any of the ministries of the church, we have that list in there for you. And uh, we hope you'll get by and get that list. Thank you so much for being in church today. Uh, let's continue singing. We're going to go to hymn number uh, 160, it's, it should, or actually 252, I'm sorry. Uh, nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood. <clears throat>
of announcements this morning, some things that uh, you need to be aware of. Uh, if you desire to take part in the offering, uh, when the service is over, we're going to have two of our men stand at both. One man stand at this driveway, the other man stand at the other driveway. And if you want to give in the offering, all you got to do is pull over there to them and just drop it in the offering plate. They'll be holding those. Uh, if you'd like to give in the offering this morning. Uh, tonight we will be having another drive-in service. It'll be at 5.30 tonight. 5.30. I know we normally meet at 6 o'clock, uh, but we want to make sure we have plenty of uh, sunlight. And uh, so we're going to meet at 5.30 tonight here. And uh, we'll have that other drive-in service. And then this Wednesday... Uh, September 23rd, uh, we'll be resuming our normal in-person schedule for all services. So this Wednesday night, uh, that'll be the 14 day what they ask of us. And uh, so after those that that win uh, this Wednesday night, we'll be able to meet. And I hope you'll be here this Wednesday night at seven o'clock. Uh, please remember that. One final announcement I want to give to you is uh, we finally got in our door hangers. Now I know you can't see them. Uh, from where you're at, but they're very nice uh, front and back door hangers. And on uh, Saturday, October the 4th at 10 o'clock, as many as would like to, we're going to meet here at the church at 10 o'clock, and uh, we're going to go out and just hang these door hangers on doors. We're not able to do uh, everything that we used to do, knocking on doors and talking with folks, but uh, we are going to try to resume some kind of outreach, and I hope you'll come and be part of that. Anybody that'd like to come, uh, you're welcome to come. You don't have to. Um, like I said, you don't have to talk to anybody. All you've got to do is go up and put this on the door. We'll tell you more about that as the time approaches. We are looking forward to it, and hopefully you'll come and uh, be a part of that. Thank you so much for being here this morning. I know that uh, it is very uncomfortable to have to sit in your car. I praise the Lord. The Lord's given us good weather today, uh, but I do appreciate your faithfulness. It means the world to me. Uh, to see you folks here this morning. Thank you so much uh, for that. Well, let's go ahead and uh, we'll sing our last song this morning. And, uh, and then we'll have uh, some ladies come and sing a special. And we'll get right into the message, all right? So let's go ahead and sing. I believe it's 160, My Jesus, I Love Thee. My Jesus, I Love Thee. <laughs>
right, take your Bibles this morning. Go with me to Daniel chapter number 1. The ladies are coming. Get ready to sing. And uh, we'll be in Daniel chapter number 1 this morning. Can everybody hear me okay? We're having some issues with the microphone. I hope everybody can hear. Uh, all right, the ladies are going to sing, and then we'll be in Daniel chapter number 1 uh, this morning. <laughs> Daniel purposed in his heart 
that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Look there, please, at verse number 8 with me. The Bible says, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. Notice the phrase, purposed in his heart. This morning, I'm going to be preaching simply on this thought, a purposed heart. A purposed heart. Let's pray together. Lord, we are thankful again for this opportunity that we have to be in this place and Lord, I know these are uh, unconventional ways in which we're able to preach, but Lord, I'm thankful that you have provided these ways for us. Now, Lord, I do pray for the next few moments as we try to listen to the Word of God. I pray that we would be able to hear well. And God, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God would speak to our hearts today. Lord, we do not just need to hear another sermon on this Sunday morning. But God, we need your word to be preached in power that these, your people, the sheep of your pasture, might be filled uh, with the word of God. Now, Lord, I pray that as we graze in the scriptures today that you would feed us according to your will. And God, you would give us understanding. Lord, I do pray for the Christians this morning that are trying to serve you. I pray this message would be an oasis, God, a, a place where they have heard the word of God and it has so helped them that they're ready to go and serve the Lord uh, this week. And God, I pray for those this morning that might be here that might be discouraged. I pray that through the preaching of the word of God and by the comfort of the Holy Spirit that you would help them. And God, I pray most of all there might be one that will be under the sound of my voice, whether in person or watching online, that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. God, I pray today they would come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Lord, please be with us today and help us. God, all is vain unless you do the work in our hearts today. Lord, we love you. We thank you again for these people, Lord, that have come. Pray you bless our time together in Jesus' name. Amen. We're continuing our series on the subject issues of the heart. Last week, I began the series by preaching about one of the greatest issues of the heart that many of God's people deal with, and that is the hardened heart. You will remember the points last week. We talked about, number one, the characteristics of a hardened heart, and we looked at how to diagnose if our hearts have become hardened to the things of the Lord. And then after we saw the diagnosis, we looked at the uh, consequences of a hardened heart. We didn't spend much time there but we do, did understand that uh, the consequences of a hardened heart is always uh, eventually the judgment of God. And then we spoke about the cure of the hardened heart, how to cause that heart of stone to become a heart of flesh again. And I'm thankful for what the Lord did in that service. Now as we continue this series, I'm going to be preaching today with another about another important issue of the heart. And I believe that this issue of the heart that we're speaking about today is paramount to the Christian life and our faithfulness to the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe this morning that if we don't do as Daniel did in verse number 8 and purpose in our hearts to follow the Lord and to serve Him faithfully all the days of our life, then we will wind up being a casualty uh, in our Christian walk. We'll wind up uh, going away from the Lord. We'll wind up as those that walk away from Christ and live our lives without even thinking of Him. And friend, I will tell you how awful it would be for a Christian who's been born again, one who is saved, to walk away from the Lord. But it's happened to many people through the courses of these years since Christ uh, came to this earth. And it's going to continue to happen. But as the people of God, if we'll follow Daniel's example, as we'll read about here in Daniel chapter number 1 and verse number 8, I believe that if we'll purpose our heart according uh, to the way that Daniel did, I believe that we would be able to live a life of faithfulness unto the Lord. And by the way, let me say this. When I'm talking about faithfulness, I'm not talking about perfection. Listen, as long as we live in this world and we live in this old sinful flesh, we're all going to fall short of the glory of God, and we understand that. But I'm talking about a consistency in the Christian life. I'm talking about something that is vital for us in our daily walk with the Lord. And if we're going to be what we need to be for the Lord Jesus, then we must have a purposed heart. Now, as I preach this morning on this thought of a purposed heart, 
I would ask each of you to prayerfully consider what's being said uh, in the scriptures that we're going to look at. And then I would encourage you at the end of the service to make a decision that you're going to purpose in your heart to be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ that you might live a life only and solely for the glory of God. Now one thing that the devil does desire, he desires to dishonor the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And one of the ways that he does that is by getting God's children to walk away from the Lord. And so it is my prayer as I was preparing this message that God would do such a work in this service and in our hearts that we might serve the Lord all the days of our lives. That's my desire. That's my greatest desire, not to be a Christian casualty. And so this morning, as we look at these things, I hope that you'll consider what's going on in Daniel chapter number 1. And it is my prayer that you would follow Daniel's pattern in purposing your heart to serve the Lord. Now let's look at this chapter uh, here in the book of Daniel and learn about Daniel's purposed heart. Number 1, we see the predicament of Daniel's life. When you look in chapter number 1 and you jump down to verse number 1, you're going to see the predicament in which Daniel found himself, and he found himself in a place of captivity. Look there in verse number 1. The Bible says in Daniel 1 and verse 1, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, and besieged it. So notice here that the city of Jerusalem uh, was besieged. It was, uh, it was overtaken by Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. Now look at verse number 2. It says, And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels in to the treasure house of his God. So notice that not only was there a, regress, a repression of Israel, but there was a ransacking of the temple. That place that was supposed to be a place of honor and glory to God, we find that even the, uh, even the treasures that were inside the vessels were brought out of the house of God, and they were placed in the devil's trophy room. What an amazing thing. All the things that God had done for the nation of Israel, now we find uh, this, this wonderful temple that, uh, that was built by Solomon. We find all the vessels being taken away, all the gold and silver and put uh, there in the house of the God of Nebuchadnezzar. These things were placed in the devil's trophy room. And I'm telling you this morning, that's what he desires. He desires all the good things that God has placed into your life. He desires to destroy them. And he desires to take you and put you in his trophy room as a trophy of dishonor. But that's not the will of God. God's will is for us to continually serve him and to continually please him in all that we do. Now jump down to verse number 3. The Bible says, And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding science, and such as had the ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And so notice that Daniel's about to be removed. Look in verse number 6. The Bible says, Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So Daniel is now taken captive. May I say this, when you read about Daniel in chapter number 1, you know what you find about Daniel? You find that he's a man that desires to be faithful to the Lord. I do not believe that the nation of uh, that Daniel was taken captive because of his own sin. I believe he was taken captive because of the national sin of Israel and because of the sin of the king of Judah. Not because, not because uh, Daniel was some wicked and ungodly person. So what I'm saying this morning is the predicament of Daniel's life is this. He was in a place that he didn't really deserve to be. He was in a place where he ought not to have been. But because of the sins of others, he was put in a bad situation. You know, oftentimes we look at our situation and we say, why do bad things happen to good people? Why is it that uh, there are people that love the Lord, but it seems like they go through great suffering, and they wind up in places that uh, they did not ever desire to be? Why is that? 
Well, oftentimes it's because of the sins of those that are around them. I want you to know something this morning, and this isn't in the notes, this is free, this is extra, but your sin does affect everyone that you're around. You may not realize it, but you are not an island. The sin that you commit, it's going to affect your family, it's going to affect your friends, it's going to affect your church, and yes, it's even going to affect the whole nation. Look around at our country and look where we're at right now. You know what it is? It is the collective sins of many people. That's why we're where we're at in our country. And if God were to send judgment upon our land, as I spoke about on Wednesday night, can I tell you this? The rain will fall on the just and the unjust. And that's where Daniel finds himself. He finds himself in a difficult situation. He finds himself in a situation in which uh, he would not have chosen for himself, but by the providence of God, there is Daniel in Babylon. Now, it's an interesting thing to me that God is going to use this bad situation, and God's still going to get maximum glory out of it. You say, how is that? Well, if you but read just a few chapters in the book of Daniel, you'll find that God promoted Daniel to a place of honor. And we'll find that Daniel was a great influence in, uh, under many rules because uh, God favored him and God blessed him. And what I'm saying this morning is God used Daniel in a great and marvelous way in spite of the predicament that he was in. So there's Daniel's captivity, but look at Daniel's challenge. Jump down to verse number 5, please. Go back to verse number 5 and look at it with me. Notice what happens. The Bible says, And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine in which he drank. Now let me pause and say this before we read the rest of the verse. The king's meat and the king's wine would have been the finest in all of the land. It would have been filled with dainties. It would have been filled with the best uh, that was there possible. But here's the problem. The meat would have been sacrificed unto idols, which the children of God were forbidden to eat. And then... There was wine there, and we know about the prohibition that God puts upon wine found in the Scriptures. And so here's Daniel. He's in a bad predicament. And now their food is being brought before them. They're in a foreign land, and this daily provision is being brought to them. It was some of the finest in the world. It would have been a great feast. But Daniel understood that had he eaten of that, that he would have sinned against the Lord. Now can I tell you, many people would have just done that anyway. They would not have rocked the boat. By the way, they were captives. They were in a bad situation. They could lose their life if they were to rock the boat. Hey, many people, whenever Daniel was taken captive, many people in Jerusalem was obliterated. They were wiped out. But here we find Daniel in this strange land. And now he's in a predicament that he would not want to be in. Not only is he in a strange land in captivity, but now there's something being brought before him that if he partakes of it, he is going to sin against his God. Daniel is a man of character. Daniel would not want to do this. So notice Daniel's decision. Notice here, uh, Daniel begins to purpose in his heart. Look at verse number 8, please. Verse number 8. The Bible says, but Daniel purposed. So they brought the food. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine in which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of, of, the, of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. And so notice Daniel had a desire. Yes, he was in a foreign land. Yes, he was in a place he did not want to be. But you know what? Daniel still had an overpowering desire uh, to please God. He did not want to defile himself and hurt his relationship uh, with his Lord. And I want to tell you, that is the greatest desire that any Christian can have. A desire that we walk with the Lord and we're not going to let anything in our lives that's going to defile us and ruin our relationship. I'm not talking about going to heaven. If you've ever believed on Jesus Christ, if you've ever come to Him for salvation, then friend, you are saved and you're eternally kept by the power of God. And let me say, I praise God for that promise and the truth of that, that we who are saved are kept by the power of God. Listen, my sonship will never change because at the moment that I was saved, I was born again into the family of God. This is an eternal thing that will never be messed up. So my sonship is intact. 
But my problem and your problem deals with our fellowship. Yes, we're children of God, but we may not be in fellowship with our Heavenly Father because we've allowed things to come into our lives that would defile us and take us away uh, from His fellowship. And listen, friend, there ought not be anything that's more dear to you than your fellowship with the God of heaven. Think about it with me, please, for a few moments. The God of heaven that created everything out of nothing. The God of heaven that sent His Son to die on the cross. The God of heaven that was willing to save your eternal soul. That same God wants to be in perpetual fellowship with you. And He wants to be in such perpetual fellowship with you that He's put the Holy Spirit of God in you so that you can constantly be in fellowship with Him. And yet how often do we lose that fellowship? We don't lose the Holy Spirit. We don't lose our sonship. We don't even lose the love of God. We just lose our relationship where we're walking with Him and spending time with Him. But Daniel did not want to do this. Daniel wanted to be right with God. And I'm going to tell you one thing that would bring revival to our country, revival to our church, revival to Tuscaloosa, would be if God's people would once again have a greater desire to be right with God than to be involved with all the muck and mire of sin in which we find ourselves. Listen, God still said in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Then will I heal their land. And then, and so you know the scriptures that I'm talking about. And so God's promise that he could send revival. If we as God's people would have a greater desire to be right with God than we uh, do to be uh, wrong in this world, I believe we could see a sweeping revival in our country. Daniel understood he was in a bad situation. Daniel understood he was in a dire situation. Daniel understood that uh, the prince of the eunuchs here could have taken Daniel out and taken his life. But Daniel said that he desired not to defile himself with the king's meat. So there's Daniel's desire. But look at Daniel's decision. It's good to have a desire, but what are you going to do about the desire? I mean, we as Christians, we desire, I believe, to be right with the Lord, but what are we going to do about that desire? Well, look what Daniel did in verse number 8. The Bible says, but Daniel purposed in his heart. So now we see Daniel's resolve. He decided his decision was one of resolve where he purposed in his heart that he was not going to do this. You've heard the old saying, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Well, here's Daniel in Babylon, and the convenient wisdom of that day would be this. As in, uh, when in Babylon, do as the Babylonians do. You know what you'll find? You'll find that other people were taken captive with Daniel and the three Hebrew children. There were more people. You go back to chapter number 1 and you look at it. You'll find in verse number 3 that the Bible says that they're to bring certain of the children of Israel. Verse 4, it talks about these children again. And then when you look there in chapter number 1 and you jump down, you'll find the prince of the eunuchs talking about the other children uh, that they brought. And so there were many people that were brought uh, to Babylon, many of these young people that were brought to Babylon, many of these that were children of Israel that were in the same place that uh, Daniel was. But Daniel made a decision and his decision was one of resolve. He purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. Everybody else was defiling themselves, but not Daniel. And what we find is that Daniel's influence on the other three, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we know them by that name. We see that Daniel's influence upon those three caused them to also make the same decision that Daniel did. Hey, the multitudes were not making the right decision. They knew what was right, I believe, and they knew what was wrong, but we find Daniel made a decision and there was resolve in it. And in this resolve, there were others that said, while every, everybody else is doing that which is wrong, we're going to stand with Daniel and we're going to stand with God. Do you know something this morning? It could be your testimony. And it could be your influence in the lives of your children, in the your influence in the lives of your grandchildren and of your friends and, and your family, other family members, and, and even in your church and your daily acquaintances, that there might be others that would see the stand that you would take and the purpose, the resolve that you have in your heart where they'll want to say, I think I'll stand with them. 
And I think I'll go the direction that they're going. Friend, I want you to know this morning that there must be a resolve in our decisions. Our decision to serve Christ must not be one that's done flippantly. But we must desire, and not only that, we must decide with resolve that we're going to do that which pleases the Lord. We find his decision was one of resolve, but also notice his decision was one of refusal. Look at verse number 8. The Bible says, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. So notice what he did. He refused. He said, I'm not going to do this. And he refused to partake of it. And friend, that's what we must do whenever we begin to purpose in our hearts to follow the Lord. You know, not everything is sin, but you know, friend, there might be things in your life that's hindering your walk with the Lord. And you may need to get them out of your life as well. We find here Daniel made a decision. And his decision was one of resolve and his decision was one of refusal. He went to this uh, prince of the eunuchs and he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. He did something about the desire that was in his heart. He took steps in order to obey God. And friend, you and I must learn to take steps to obey the Lord. You know, the Bible says in Luke chapter 9 verse 23, the Lord Jesus says this to his disciples. He says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So notice, there's a denial, and then there's a death. You take up a cross, it means you're dying to your desires. And then we see, follow me. You know what that is? That is a decision. That is a dedication. And so we find these three aspects in the life of Daniel. Daniel not only had a desire... But he did something about the desire. And if, friend, if we've got a desire to serve God, then you know what we need to do? We need to do something about it. But you won't do anything about it unless you purpose in your heart that you're not going to defile yourself. Titus 2.12 says, Teaching us that denying ungodliness and unworldly lust, and worldly lust, that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Listen, right is still right. Wrong is is still wrong. It doesn't matter what the world labels it. If it's wrong according to the Word of God, it is wrong. It does not change with our, uh, with our culture. Christians, by the way, should not, be, should not worry about being cultural. We should worry about being counter-cultural because this world is going away from the Lord day by day. I remember just being a young man in high school looking at the world and now at 43 looking back even to those years and I can see how, how far the world has moved away from God since that time. And it seems like over the last few years it's even on a more rapid pace. Think about it. Last year did you think that we would be where we're at right now? What about two years before? Did you think that uh, there would be laws that would be restricting uh, churches and uh, restricting the work of the ministry? No. That's just how far our country has gone away from God. And it's gone even faster in these years. And so we as the people of God, we must purpose that we're not going to defile ourselves. We must purpose that we're going to do everything that we can to stay right with God. We must purpose that we're going to walk with the Lord in a manner that would please Him and we're going to cast off the works of darkness. So there's the predicament of Daniel's life. Then number two, we see the purposing of Daniel's heart. Number three, notice the provision of Daniel's God. Jump down to verse number nine. Notice what God did. Daniel made a decision. Daniel had resolve. And now God is going to make a way. If I would have been the prince uh, of the eunuchs in these verses and a captive would have come to me and would have requested that, that why well, change his diet and I go out of my way to provide him something differently, you know what I'd have done? I wouldn't have done it. He would have eaten or he would have starved. But you know what God did? God made a way. Look in verse number 9. The Bible says, Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And by the way, only God could have done that. Verse 10. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto David, I fear the Lord, my lord the king, who hath appointed your meat and your drink. Why should, uh, for why should he see your faces whose 
uh, faces worse liking than the children which are of your are of your sort. Then shall you make me in danger of my head. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. So notice God gave favor in this situation. God took care of it. This man is now going to provide Daniel that which he requested. And Daniel said, well, let's put God to the test. You let everyone else eat of the portion of the king's meat and drink of the wine. You give us pulse, which is basically vegetables, and give us water to drink. And after these ten days, we'll see how we fare. And if we fare well, let us continue. But if we don't, then we'll go back. And what you find here is that at the end of ten days, the Bible says that, uh, look in verse number 15, at the end of ten days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children, which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Melzar took away the portion of the meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. You see how God made a way? God made a way. They did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and God made a way for them to stay right with God. You know, I believe this morning that as the people of God, that if we desire to be right with the Lord, that God is going to make a way in every situation that we might be right with Him. Does not the Bible tell us that, uh, that uh, with every temptation He's going to make a way of escape? Listen, God's going to have a way. If we want to be right with God and we want to walk with the Lord, no matter where you find yourself at this morning, God is going to make a way for you to do so. You just have to be wise enough to find out what it is. So here's Daniel. Daniel found himself in a predicament that he did not want to be in, but Daniel purposed in his heart to do right. Three men came along beside him and said, Daniel will do right too. And now God is providing for them favor in the sight of their in the sight of their captives. Now, look what the Bible says. Jump down to verse number 21, please. Not only did God provide him favor, but God also provided for him longevity. You, you think about this. Daniel's in a strange land. He's a captive. He's in a place he would not want to have been. And Daniel's already made some decisions to go against the government, did he not? But you know what God did? God gave Daniel a long, happy life, even in captivity. Look at verse 21. It says, And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. You say, what's the significance about verse 21? Well, the first year of King Cyrus was about 538 B.C. And Daniel was taken captive in about 606 B.C. So Daniel was in captivity for 68 years. What an amazing thing. Daniel, a little bit after that, was still in the kingdom, we know from reading the book of Daniel. So Daniel was some 70 years later still serving God in his 80s and 90s. He was still faithful. God preserved him. Remember, uh, Belshazzar, that was the son of Nebuchadnezzar. You remember that uh, he was having a, wine, a, a big party. And then he was taken captive that night. Babylon was taken by another country. And then that country was taken over by another country. But God preserved Daniel in every single one. What I'm saying is this this morning. Is that God blessed Daniel for his stand. You know what Proverbs 3.33 says? It says, The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. You want your home to be blessed? You want your life to be blessed? You want to live a blessed life? Well, here's how you get it. By purposing in your heart to be right with God and doing everything within your power to make sure that you stay right with God. Don't you sleep so much better when your heart's right with the Lord? Doesn't it seem like your days go a lot better, even in difficult times, when you're right with the Lord? Do you know why? It's because you have the help of God. God is helping you. God is taking care of you. God is not only giving you favor, but He's working through the circumstances. And what we learn from the life of Daniel is this. It matters not what predicament you find yourself. If you'll purpose in your heart, God will provide. The Bible tells us this, just about done, that God is no respecter 
of persons. That means this, that he didn't love Daniel more than he loves you. Now you think about that. He didn't care more for Daniel than he cares about you. So you know what that tells me? The God that helped Daniel is the same God that can help you and I this morning. But in order for him to be on your side and for him to help you, you have to know him. Do you know Christ is your personal Savior? Hey, if you can't purpose in your heart, you can't purpose in your heart to serve God if you don't know him. Has there ever been a time that you understood you were a sinner and you needed to be saved? Well, the Bible tells us all about that in the book of Romans. Listen, if you've not been saved, if you're not sure that you're going to heaven, I would encourage you before you leave today that you would get that settled. You say, well, pastor, does that mean I've got to join your church? No, you can go to heaven without even joining a church or coming to church if you'll trust Christ as Savior. You say, does that mean I've got to give? No, it just means you've got to come to Christ. Listen, that is God's requirement for salvation. Hey, if you'll come to him, the Bible says he will in no wise cast you out. See, Jesus came. He died on the cross. He suffered. He bled and died. And after three days and three nights, he rose again so you could have eternal life. Hey, do you know him this morning? Hey, if you don't know him, you can't walk with him. You can't purpose your heart to serve him if you don't know him. So, friend, if you don't know him, I would encourage you today to trust Christ as your Savior. Can we bow our heads and hearts this morning? I'm going to pray, and then after I pray, we're going to have a short time of invitation. I know you can't get out of your seat. I understand that, or get out of your car. I understand we're not going to make you come up and kneel on the asphalt. But I would ask you this morning that if God spoke to your heart about what was preached about, or maybe God spoke to your heart about something else, that you would make a decision and have some resolve in your life where you'll purpose to serve Him. Let's bow our head and hearts together, please. Lord, thank you for these people this morning. As far as I can tell, they listen so well. Lord, I would ask you this morning that as the word of God went forth, that it would have gone forth in power. And God, I pray that if there might be one here that does not know Christ as their Savior, Lord, I pray right now, God, they would trust you. Trust in him before it's eternally too late. Lord, eternity is long, hell is hot, but all oh, heaven is so sweet. And God, I just pray today that if one is lost, they don't know Christ, that right now, out of a sincere heart, they would pray, and God, they would say something like that they're a sinner, they know they deserve hell, and God, that they would pray and just call upon Christ right now. God, I pray for that. Lord, I pray for the Christian this morning that's struggling in their walk with you. Lord, they've been saved. Maybe some have been saved for a matter of weeks, some maybe for a matter of months, some even for many years. And God, maybe they know they're saved, but they know that they have not made some right decisions. God, may right now they make the most important decision, and that is to make sure that they're right with you right now. And then God, help them to resolve to stay right with you for the remainder of their days. Yesterday's gone, Lord, we can't do anything about that. But God, we can determine from right now forward to serve you and be right with you. And God, I pray your people would have that desire. And God, I pray they would make that decision. And God, I pray that they would be determined to serve you. The Lord, I tried to obey your spirit. Tried to follow your leading this morning. And God, I pray you would just work in every heart. We ask it in Jesus' name. Piano's going to play. God's spoken to your heart.